Three, two. A little brainwash. Set. Ah. Tech 33. Rowdy. I mean, most of the crew, pretty much everyone here, started out doing graffiti in the 80s and like before, even when they were like 11 or 12 years old, most of the crew. And then they just like carried on doing graffiti into their teens. And then just always been our passion ever since to do graffiti. With different crew members, you've got different elements that they do and you can break it apart. So with Mighty Mo does his monkeys and if he's working with Sweet Tooth, they'll do a monkey cross with a T. So everything's sort of interchangeable to a degree. If I'm not there, Lenny's probably got a full skull. If I'm there, then his skull's cracked open with the brain sticking out. So we've all got our own little parts as elemental things that you can actually put together and create the, the whole piece. Lenny's our sort of signature tune, and everybody can sort of drop in and out of it. Half of us sort of went to art school and that in the early 90s and stuff, and sort of did degrees and MAs like at, later on at Royal Academy of Art, Royal College of Art and stuff. So now half the crew is our artists as our day job. We do, we sell like paint, large paintings and sculptures and stuff, do that in the day, and then like do this for like fun on our day off. Well, I dream about painting every night, and so that's what I love to do, you know, it's my passion, and yeah, so it's hard to stop. It's an addiction in a way. I mean, my mum says to me, you know, don't please don't do it anymore. If, she, if I get caught now, she'll like it, she'll have a nervous breakdown sort of thing, do you know what I mean? You know, I don't think that real graffiti is accepted. I think that people like street art because there's been a price tag been put on it. And people are saying, you know, nothing's worth anything unless you can make money out of it. That's how society sees everything. You know, there's plenty of people out there that, you know, graffiti artists who've carved a sort of fine art career and a graph career. And I think the one sort of balances the other. They both inform each other. And it's like when you get pissed off with the system and the galleries and the agents, you can always go out on the street. While, there's, while, there's, you know, while it's all about property, property laws, the laws be uh, walls to paint and people to piss off. So um, I think that side of thing keeps you real because once you start doing art with the galleries and stuff like that, you start to become a little bit institutionalised and it's, it's like joining the establishment, whereas the whole thing about a graph for me is sort of anti-establishment. So there's a little bit of a contradiction, like, like most things in life, a little bit of a paradox. But yeah, Burning Candy in session, London 2009, rocking and shocking. I'd do anything to get on telly. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do anything to get on telly.